But you know, unfortunately, this whole uh, open marriage thing, the idea of guys instigating this is becoming more common, at least from what I'm seeing in my research. Mm-hmm. Uh, which uh, My research, you know, you, like you go into the polyamory forums on Reddit and you get, you know, the I'm, am I the asshole stories and shit. And these stories, they're just everywhere. Look, mm-hmm. here's one. My boyfriend asked for something and now he feels like I've betrayed him. So me and my boyfriend have been dating about six months, all things good until now. I've had a pretty promiscuous couple of years before meeting him, and he knows this. It's a bad idea. Uh, Idiot. In fact, he loves this. He's a cunt. Somebody smiles like this. (laughs) Would always turn him on when I shared stories with him. He's been asking for a threesome slash cucking for a few weeks now. Yep. And I was originally saying no because I wasn't super into it, didn't think he would really want that. Well, I gave in and went for it, which means that her respect for him, gone. He probably came from a broken home, didn't have a father figure to tell him probably to follow. And so Uh, did she. Yeah. I asked for days beforehand if he was sure, and he always said yes. He kept saying he just wanted to watch a bigger guy, quote, (laughs) rearrange my guts. Oh, my God. Fine. We found a guy, huge, probably double my boyfriend's penis size, and I let him have me while my boyfriend watched. Turns out, boyfriend couldn't actually handle it. Shocker. <laughs> didn't say anything until it was over, but it was basically, how could you do this to me? But he probably said it crying tears of soy. Yeah. He kept saying how much louder I was and stuff, but he couldn't listen when I said it doesn't matter and I still prefer to be with him because he's my boyfriend. He just won't listen to me. He's been sulking about it for days, and I think I'm over it. I'm just going to break up with him and move on. Good. That's actually the healthy thing to do. Yeah, he should have actually been the one to fucking get rid of her, man. Well, no, he wanted this. This is what porn addiction does to your brain. Yeah. You oh, start, yes. yeah. yeah. Oh, my God. You start Woo. confusing fantasy with reality. Yep. Mm. It is amazing. I, I think the whole, like, cooking, wife-sharing bullshit is, like, one of the top-searched things on all of these sites every year. Like, clockwork. Who are these sad sack of simps? Uh, these know, are man. not these sad sacks of simps that are pushing it. Uh, these porn sites, they give you the suggestions yeah. by themselves. So it's not like uh, demand and supply. It's more like the supply creating demand. Yep. Y- you are getting reprogrammed. Your brain is getting rewired when you watch this shit. It's not healthy. Yep. Switch it the fuck off. Yeah. I am going to have to agree with you, yeah. wild man. There are young dudes, 18, 19 years old, who have warped their brains with pornography to the extent where when they finally get an actual woman in front of them who takes all of her gear off, they can't even get it up. Yep. And they're at the the age when a stiff breeze can, you know, make you stand at full attention. Like, I remember being at 16 years old, Christmas shopping with my grandmother, walking through Macy's, I catch a whiff of the perfume, (gasps) boom! (laughs) Seriously. Seriously. I'm like, oh, shit. Oh. <laughs> I'm over there like, ah. Uh, but, I mean, that's the way it used to be. Yeah. But it's like diabetes. Let's, if you eat uh, sugar all the time, sooner or later, your body is not going to be re- receptive to your insulin that your pancreas produces. It's the same thing with oxytocin. If yep. you're maxing out oxytocin, you know, f- you know, fornicating like a free range guy. Yeah, for sooner people. or later, mm. you're gonna get to a point where you're like, eh, yeah, nothing really does it for me yeah. anymore. For those of you who don't know, oxytocin is the pair bonding hormone that women excrete in a huge amount when they lose their virginity, and then in a smaller and smaller amount with every new cock that comes after. And by right, the time they're beyond four or five, it's done. It's done. Yeah, and you know, the minute they go beyond four or five. If you were to marry one of these women, your chances of divorce go up 80%. Yep. It's already 50% coming out of the gate. So it's almost an automatic failure. Absolutely. Yeah, because, Why the uh, fuck uh, would you participate in it? Sorry, sorry, Z, I yeah, stepped over you. What, yeah, you, what you're saying? Uh, ho- hormonally speaking, she doesn't even perceive you as a human being anymore. Yep. You're just a speed bump. Yep. Mm-hmm. 
Oh, so I, I I remember uh, watching some research. Uh, the there were MRE scans of brains taken, and a porn addiction warps the brain precisely in the same way that opiate addiction does. Really? So you, you get the, you get the same type of brain damage. Mm. Wow, wow! I didn't know that. That's crazy. But it, I'm I not find surprised. this research, I'll send it to you. Yeah, well, yeah like, absolutely. Like, I'm not going to sit there and tell the guys out there not to watch porn. I watch porn every now and again, maybe one or two times a month. You get bored. <laughs> it is what it is. But when <laughs> yeah, I was but... 16, I would literally live in front of a TV and feed in one one videotape <laughs> after the next. <laughs> oh, if I, I'd literally still be there up until I was like 32, <laughs> watching porn 24/7, 365. Now imagine having it. With you, everywhere you go. Porn. On tap. Yeah. On, yeah, on tap. You want to talk about getting warped. Yeah. And, and these kids, I mean, like, you, know, you got parents buying kids cell phones, but basically if, as soon as they're old enough to look at the damn screen and type in shit. And half the time they're not even watching what the, they're not even looking at what the kids are watching. Yeah, I mean, they could be watching double penetration porn. You think they're they think they're watching Barney in the back seat. I wonder if you can actually, if you have to get a cell phone for your kid, if you can severely limit it so they can you call can. you. It's just you know, what are the chances that the mm. kid is going to figure out the fucking parental locks before the parents do? <laughs> no, no. I mean, you can give your kid a dumb phone or a feature phone, as it's called. It yeah. just has a screen and buttons. It can't connect to the internet. All it can do is. Uh, uh, call, call, send messages, and maybe play some music. That's it. There you go. I'm totally cool with that. That's how you and, do and you know what? That would probably be a really good marketing thing for people today when they have kids. Yeah. You're like, hey, you can get this phone, and all I could do is call you, call the school, call the police, and and you have five other people they can call. Um, they can send text messages just to those five other people. Mm -hmm. And guess what? No internet. Yeah. There you go. Yeah, but we live in a in an age where a kid like this is going to get bullied for not having a smartphone. So yeah. that's another problem. Well, well then you're going to have to flip the bill to take him to you know, Muay Thai lessons and jiu-jitsu. Yeah, or you can homeschool him, which is what you should be doing anyway. That's right. Fuck public yep. school. I mean, the shit that's going on in public school today, it, yeah. I'm blaming all of this craziness that we're having today, including this polyamory horse mm -hmm. shit. On the school system. I mean, they're essentially in pedo school now. Yep. These yeah. people are disgusting. Drag queen story hour, anyone? Oh, absolutely, yeah. Sign me up for that shit. Mm. <laughs> Got another one here. My husband wanted to sleep with other people. Now he's upset about me doing it. My husband basically begged for a year, maybe longer, to sleep with other people. He knew I didn't want it. I told him no over and over. I was crying so many times after he would ask. I told him I was depressed about it, didn't want it. Why does he want other people? He said, it's nothing about me. He just wants to see what it's like with other people. That, that I look good, but he isn't doing it because it looks. Basically, he just <laughs> wanted to try anyone else. That's one of the weakest fucking excuses. It is. For and that kid. woman should jettison that yeah. motherfucker that, over the wall. That's Put him right in the up there with, I got a lot of love to give. <laughs> I'm sure you do. <laughs> After he wouldn't stop, I said, fine. Told him I didn't want to do it, but he would not quit asking, so fine, just go for it. He did some stuff with a person, but not full-blown sex. That's all he's done. He told me when he was begging that whole time that I can do it too, and I can go have fun and go away for the night. Mm -hmm. da -da. Da -da. And here we go. Well, I wasn't that interested, but I started talking to someone, and the conversation just went that way. I haven't felt wanted like this in forever, and, and honestly, if this is a true story... I don't blame you. Keep in mind, he told me a week ago I can go and find someone and just tell him when I'm going. So I told him last week I'm going to time talking to someone, and the other night I said, okay, I'm going to do it. Well, then he comes to me the next day, and he says, he was sad about it. He couldn't sleep all night, and he's scared I'm going to leave him. I told him, honestly, I'm pretty pissed because I feel like for a year he knew how I didn't want to do it, but he just kept begging, so he's getting what he wanted. Now he says he regrets it. <laughs> Oh my gosh! Uh, <sighs> two confused, fatherless idiots. Yep. Yeah. I told him, "Oh well, he did it, and it's <laughs> bullshit to change it just when it's benefiting me." 
that's turnabout's fair play right there. Yep. I honestly might divorce if he tells me I can't because of what he put me through. It's, it's so much shit. I don't want to be a single mom, but I'm pretty mad about this. I gave him what he wanted after all that torment and heartache, and now he's pulling this. He said he hasn't changed his mind, but if he does, I'm done. He wanted this. He got it. He didn't care about how much it hurt me. Now, there's a there's an update, but there's nothing really yeah, additional there. Mm. Oh, yeah. So another case of a guy ruining his life and ruining his marriage. So yep. and his children. He, yeah, yeah. He has a woman. He has a good woman. Mm. Well, mostly who doesn't want to cheat on him. He has a kid, and yep. he goes and does this. And so, and yeah. Just because he, he wants to it. see what else is he, out there. And listen, yeah, he had it. He has it coming. Yeah, faithfulness and loyalty are lessons that are taught to men yeah. from their fathers. Yeah, and honestly, this is proof, unfortunately, that some men, they blow past that window of age at 34 where the big head is supposed to overpower the little head, and they're like, eh. Because <laughs> I know dudes who are older than you, like grandpas, they're still like, oh, I would give you some of that. These dudes who would uh, come into Blockbuster Video when I was working there rent softcore porn every day. Yep. I'm like, how much, I mean, what could you possibly do to it at this point? Are you talking about what's behind the room with the bead curtains? Uh, we didn't have that at Blockbuster, which is why it was even funnier. <laughs> You're going to go home and spank into softcore porn. All right, got well, it. Well, technically speaking, if a man lives a healthy lifestyle, he can... Uh, Get it up up to eight years of age. Yeah, yeah. Well, what are you gonna do? Yeah, well, like my grand grandma always said when she, uh, you know, would answer the phone during certain periods of time when you really should just <laughs> unplug it. <laughs> Don't ever marry a Frenchman. It's the last thing to go on him. You're disgusting, <laughs> Grandma. I love you. I'll call you later. Uh, uh, hang up the phone. <laughs> hang up the phone. <laughs> oh, ah! 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 I hope the lights are all off. <laughs> no one should ever have to see that not even you oh my god that's nightmare fuel right well, after there. that fucking email that was sent to us on Tuesday <laughs> you blocked it out didn't you it's pretty creepy it's, it's disgusting yeah. I mean spunk in midair oh <laughs> oh yeah oh god it's like catching lightning striking <laughs> that was so horrible <laughs> I mean, I listen. I congratulate whoever sent that because that was really <laughs> fucking shocking. <laughs> Bravo to you! But yeah, uh, oh my god, y'all are some disgusting mother fornicators who watch this show. It's okay though; we love you. Don't yeah, we? yeah, it's all good. <laughs> oh god. Oh, here we go. Here's another one. Am I the bastard for asking to retract the open marriage I begged my wife for? You're going to see a, a a theme in a lot of these Reddit posts. For years, I've wanted an open marriage, or at least I thought I did. <laughs> I begged my wife, and she's always said no, but she finally agreed to it. I wonder if this is the guy from the last one. Oh, my God. Uh, we agreed to ground rules. Those don't listen. Th they don't end well. They don't work. And they usually get ignored. One, yes. no dating mutual friends. Two, fully disclose our married status on dating apps. Three, use protection and disclose everything we do and with whom. Well, I suppose I should not have been surprised because she's a good-looking woman in her late 30s, but she instantly had dozens of matches, maybe hundreds. On nights when she's home, she spends hours swiping and texting, sometimes disappearing <laughs> into the bathroom to take selfies. She doesn't say that, but it's obvious. Yeah, yeah. The other nights she's out, usually coming home in the morning to shower, change, and you're ready for work. From what she has told me, most of her dates are younger guys in their 20s, which means she's practice. Yeah, that's right. Meanwhile, I've struggled to find anyone appealing to match with. She has also gradually stopped having sex with me. When she does, it's perfunctory, like she's just getting it all over with. So overall, this is not working for me, and I believe it's damaging our marriage and life together. Would I be the butt face for asking her to call the whole thing off? Well, you were the butt face for asking for it in the first place. Well, I'm going to be honest. You destroyed your marriage, bro. Yep. It, yeah, it's done. Th this genie is not going back no, into the bottle. No, you're not getting that yeah. back in the bottle, man. Absolutely not. So, I mean, uh, Reddit is a cesspool. Yes, okay, it is. Okay, but, uh, I mean, these guys, so uh, th y y younger guys in their 30s, maybe late 20s, once again, porn, porn addicts yep. thinking that it will be exactly like in their favorite movie. 
No. It will not. No, no. it does. Listen, that's all. That's all <laughs> fantasy that takes place on that little screen. Yep. Reality is a completely different thing. This is a great one here. Oh, what shit. you just said that you think it's going to be like your favorite movie. You know, like Mia Khalifa made a dozen movies <laughs> in six months. Yeah. Um, this is from 4chan this time, and I, I called this one Nightmare Fuel the second that I read it. It's one of those green text things. Need some advice. So I convinced my fiancé to do a swingers thing. Mm. The couple we met was a bit older and had a lot more experience. Not super tall. The other guy was 6'2 plus. Even the guy's wife was about the same height as me. I felt kind of intimidated. I felt awkward the whole time, like the guy was really smooth talking and sweet with my fiance, but I just <laughs> didn't feel any chemistry with the girl. <clears throat> I'm up front that we had never done anything like this before, and they're cool about that. They kind of took the lead. We were in the hotel room with two queen beds, so we were each on one, me with the girl, my fiance with him. They had instant chemistry and started right away. They were literally <laughs> banging before I'd even kissed the other lady. Like I said, really awkward with the lady. She gives me a BJ, but I can't concentrate because they're banging next to us. <laughs> <laughs> she tells me, she tells me, keeps giving me a BJ slash HJ, and I eventually finish. I just lay there and basically watch my fiance get plowed for like 30 minutes. He asks her where she wants him to finish, and she says, in her mouth. This really stung because she never gives me BJ's, nor would she ever swallow. <laughs> she just laid there for a bit and then asked if we could leave, but she said she wanted to go another round. I was sick to my stomach and demanded that we leave. We left. Now my fiancé is super upset with me and saying I ruined the night. I tried telling her that I wasn't about any of it and that I didn't have fun. She was just not having any of it and is basically being a total bitch about things. I really don't know what to do. I can't get the images out of my head. It's over. It's done. <laughs> and you did it. And you did it to yourself, brother. <laughs> okay. It's a done deal. That's, that's swinging. That's a fetish. Yeah. You yeah. should not expect a fetish to be a foundation of a stable relationship. Hell no. Hell no. You're absolutely correct, bro. And once again... Uh, the culture of instant gratification. These people yep. want everything. They want it now. They want it just the way they uh, picture it in their head. This doesn't fucking happen once no. again. And you are 100% core ecto. It reminds me of uh, that monologue that Justin Timberlake goes off on in the social network. You know, the, the movie that was about the, the rise of Facebook. Yeah, yeah. And he said <clears throat> that... It's not enough, you know, to do this and that. Now we're going to live on the internet. That is how a lot of people actually live their lives now. That's they so think sad. that the internet, that social media, the shallow validation and clout that they can get from posting something that a bunch of insipid twats like somehow conflates to real achievement. Yeah. How and many of those no, people are going to show up to help you move? Exactly. Yeah. But no, because it's you so are easy for in a women difficult to get situation. It. Okay. Good. Sorry, Z, yeah, what? It, yeah, if you are in, in a difficult situation, in actual bad situation, like you need help fast, your likes and retweets and reposts, they don't mean they're shit. worthless. No. They are decorations Listen, at best. I have friends that I consider brothers like you. And uh, if I was to receive a call at like 2 in the morning saying, hey, I have this really heavy rug to move... <laughs> I would be there as soon as possible. <laughs> it's a very special rug. I got it from a... Or a <laughs> large box or a old refrigerator. Got yeah, it. Totally, yeah. Things happen. All right. Now, yeah, if you don't and, have... Uh, or perhaps they need to move into the box that the refrigerator yeah. came in. Well, the thing is, if you don't have a friend in your life that will do that for you, you're a poor man. Yeah. Yeah, and once again, conflating the internet with reality, these people think that uh, these uh, idiots on Reddit or on Facebook, they're their friends, because just they're called friends. They're not. They're they not. don't care about you. They're barely even uh, associates. Yeah. 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 And they're faceless to you, and you should treat them exactly like this. You don't know these people. They're strangers that you talk to <clears throat> sometimes. Yep. 
and yet how many times have we seen these you know these <laughs> these vapid vunts <laughs> getting that they get their insta twats banished for some reason or another and then they cry i am nothing without my followers exactly family friends do you have none of these things you have spent so much time trying to live on the internet and you know g- get the thumbs up you don't realize that when the time comes if you get into a car accident and you want somebody to hold your hand that thumb doesn't have the other four fingers mm-hmm. it's not going to happen for you I, 33-year-old female, forced my husband, 33, into an open relationship, and now he's leaving me? The best part is the last paragraph. Mm -hmm. I'm going to make you wait for it. Me and my husband have been married for five years. Two years after the marriage, his parents died in a car accident. He was depressed, and we haven't been intimate for a long time. That's understandable. I asked him if he would consider an open relationship. He was really hesitant, but after me convincing him, he said yes. Our intimacy suffered. We have separate bedrooms, but my needs were fulfilled by others. Fast forward to today, he came to me and said he wants a divorce, saying that I put him into emotional stress and abused him mentally for my own benefits. I apologized to him for any pain I have caused to him. He bust out of tears, and I tried to hug him, but he didn't let me touch him and said to me that I manipulated him. Yeah, and so, you did. So I don't have any problems in cheating on him, and I said that if he wants to end the open relationship, I'm ready to do it. Done. He said for the past 18 months, he's been with this girl who is a psychiatrist at the hospital where he goes for therapy. I didn't even know he was going there. She knows of our whole relationship. He says she made him realize that he deserves to be loved and all that crap. I think he's being manipulated by her. Oh, my God. I really don't want to lose him. <laughs> That's typical woman behavior, though. They do that all the time. Yep. Homewreckers. Yeah. Oh. Fetish. So, yeah. That, they get off on this kind of stuff. Never mind the fact that he lost his parents in one of the most tragic ways possible at a pretty pretty young age. You know, I mean, not as young as I was when I lost my dad. I was 20. But 33, I mean, that relationship usually becomes stronger after you leave the home because you start to realize that all the shit that your parents told you growing up that you were like, my parents don't know anything. Well, you know what? They were right. And And you were stupid. (laughs) Yes, you were. Yeah. And in two parent homes, we'll say. I know that you're like, "Eh, my mom's kind of an idiot. (laughs) Uh, I knew she was out of her mind when I was like 12. Yeah, but but in most two parent homes, you know, when you got the the balance of the logic to the emotion, after, you know, you you start to, you hit adulthood and you actually start experiencing real responsibilities, you start to realize just how fucking stupid you were. Yep. And all that rebellion, you're like, you know what? I'm sorry. I'm sorry I was a piece of shit when (laughs) I was a kid. And you know what? I'm still here, which means you didn't murder me. So thanks, mom and dad. (laughs) We really appreciate it. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, if your parents were good people, you should value them really, and you should thank them once in a while because who knows, you might never get the chance. That's right. Exactly. Yeah. That's because uh, until you are eighteen, your parents' names are mother and father, but after you are eighteen, well, their names are pain and misery. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah, I got gotcha. value what you have. Exactly. Yeah. And this chick apparently didn't value this guy's connection to his parents at all because instead of, you know, topping him off every now and then and trying to instigate the process, she just let the intimacy lapse and decided that she was going to go to piece of strange somewhere else. That's right. Nice lady. And after five years, I'm uh, listen, this woman <coughs> has gone far beyond five partners before she got married. That's oh, why this yeah. is happening. Bunch of jail. All I mean, right. just the fact that your uh, wife asks you about this is already a red flag the size of a skyscraper. (laughs) Amen to that. Watch Gruntspeak Live every Tuesday and Thursday at 8 p.m. Eastern. And if you want to join Pop for Supporter Sundays, go to redonkulous.com slash donate and make a monthly pledge. A link is in the Meat Gazer box.